Welcome to War Thunder. I am Commander Tyriel. Crew skills are War Thunder's way of simulating the experience and skill gained by air, ground and naval crews as they complete combat missions, allowing them to perform more efficiently or survive longer as they gain veterancy. Some examples include how quickly ships are repaired in port, how fast the gunnery crew can fit shells into the gun breach, the dispersion of rockets and bombs, and the amount of g-forces that can be sustained by a pilot. Crew experience is gained in the form of crew XP points earned by participating in battles. The number of points accrued for crew experience depends on the research points earned as well as the game mode. In realistic and simulated battles, for every 100 RP, the player will receive one crew XP point, which can be spent on a crew of the vehicle that was used. In arcade battles, every 100 RP will grant the player 3 XP points, but this higher rate also has the crew experience spread out amongst all the vehicles in the lineup. Another way to obtain crew XP is by purchasing them with Golden Eagles via the Accelerated Training tab on the top right corner of the crew training window. In naval, crew level has a dramatic effect on the survivability and damage output of your vessel, so it is important to spend your crew points wisely. I'll go through each skill, what it does, and also giving them a rank based on how important they are. The relative usefulness does change a small amount based on the ship class, but not enough to matter. Ship Commander Leadership Improves all of the crew member skills by 5%. This skill isn't affected by a qualification level of a crew, and is one of the most expensive to train. Spend points here if you will give you extra crew members. A tier Crew Interchangeability Every ship has a set number of crew which can be lost a number of ways. This skill lowers the number of crew required on board for your vessel to remain seaworthy. The more points you spend here, the longer you will survive in combat. Think of it like your health points. S tier. Radio communication. In arcade mode, it highlights all enemies around the player on the minimap. This happens if any allied vehicle sees them, including aircraft. With a default range of 250 meters, in realistic mode it increases the range at which enemy players detected by the allied team are displayed, through little red arrows pointing downwards on the border of the screen. Either effect can be increased up to 500 meters. C tier. Observers. Air target detection distance increases the distance at which aircraft can be outlined by a marker. D tier. Surface Target's Detection Distance Increases the distance at which ground and naval vehicles will be outlined by a marker. This skill also increases the distance at which the full vehicle name is displayed when using radio commands. Otherwise, simply the class of vehicle is displayed. D tier. Enemy Torpedo Detection Distance Increases the distance at which torpedoes and their trails are marked. It has a negligible effect when upgraded and is a waste of crew points. D tier. Engine Room Ship Control Reduces the time between sending a command for the engine speed or rudder turn and applying that change. It's an extremely important skill if you want to be manoeuvrable. S tier. Fire Prevention Reduces the chances of a fire in the engine room, engine compartment or transmission house. A tier. Gunners The main caliber reload speed Reduces the reload time of the main guns. It is extremely important and a priority no matter what ship class you're in. S tier. Auxiliary caliber reload speed. Reduces the reload time of auxiliary guns and is important on cruisers and other ships where secondaries are frequently used. B tier. Triple A caliber reload speed. Reduces the reload time of triple A guns and is less important in my opinion. C tier. Triple A Gunner Accuracy Improves the accuracy of AI gunners when firing their AA guns. This skill has no effect when the Triple A guns are being manually aimed. C tier. Auxiliary Gunner Accuracy Improves the accuracy of AI gunners when firing the auxiliary guns. This skill has no effect when the auxiliary guns are being manually aimed or when they're bound to the primary fire weapon. Distance Fuse Set Accuracy Improves the accuracy of distance fuse when using an airburst capable shell. D tier. Very minimal effect even when spending lots of points. Damage control. Unwatering time. Reduces the time required to remove the water from the vessel when flooding. 
B tier. Fire extinguishing. Reduces the time taken to extinguish a fire, reducing the damage received from said fire. A tier. Breach repair. Reduces the time required to repair the hull of the vessel. B tier. Survival leadership. Reduces the penalty gained for attempting to pump water, extinguish fires, or repair the vehicle simultaneously. When no points are spent in this skill, any extra repair initiated before the first is finished will incur a huge time penalty. With max points and an ace crew, captains can afford to run two repairs simultaneously. A tier. Break the will of the American people. At least, whatever will that remains. Logistical services. The following two crew skills do not affect in-game combat, but rather allow you to repair your vehicles for free over time. If you uncheck automatic repair on the right of your lineup bar, this function is mainly used by players who play many nations at once and don't mind waiting in order to save silver lions. These skills are shared between the crew types, which means that points spent in these skills will affect a crewed vehicle no matter what type of vehicle it is air, land or sea. Repair speed. Affects the speed at which vehicles are repaired. Repair time can be shortened by up to three times when fully researched. For example, the base repair time of a BF109 F4 TROP in AB is 7 hours and 50 minutes, while with max repair speed it is reduced to 2 hours and 36 minutes. This skill also affects the repair time of aircraft that have landed on a friendly airfield during a battle. Repair Rank Determines the maximum aircraft rank to which the repair speed skill is applied. Has a total of 5 stages that correspond with the number of vehicle ranks in game. Now we come to qualification levels. Players can level up crew skills through two ways. Spending their crew XP points and investing in crew qualifications through spending silver lions. Unlike skills, qualification levels are purchased only for a specific vehicle in that crew slot. Think of qualification as an exceptionally trained crew in control of a particular vehicle. To learn it, a minimum crew level needs to be unlocked first, increasing with the vehicle's rank. In the case of naval, crew experience only accounts for 40% of the maximum available stat increases that you can apply to a ship. To maximize fire rate, repair time and handling, the remaining 60% of the increases come from qualification levels, Expert and Ace, with the remaining 10% bonus provided by the skill Ship Commander's Leadership. Just by purchasing the qualification, you can nearly reach the same level of efficiency increase as spending 50,571 crew experience points. Once purchased, any RP earned will contribute towards an ACE qualification for a discounted Golden Eagle price or even free after some serious effort. This is very worthwhile on premium, top tier or vehicles that you plan on using all the time. Remember that unspent crew points are also transferable between modes so you can earn a significant amount of crew experience with any premium vehicles you have in your lineup. Then transfer across to say ground RB and use the points to prop up stats in crews that are underperforming. I earned the maximum crew level in all of my US pilot slots a few years ago, and now any points that I earn in an aircraft, I spend on my ground and naval crews. I hope you found this interesting and useful. If so, please leave me a like, and feel free to ask any questions in the comments section, and I'll do my best to answer them. Until the next transmission, Commander Tyrael, out.